Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to this edition of the Ashanti and the Slave Trade, a reply path one. And to you, our dear viewer, it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. The goal is for you to look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications referenced and study them yourself. Remember, because brothers don't let each other wander in the dark alone, Jarlene Perry. And from our brother Martin Luther King Jr. The beauty of genuine brotherhood and peace is more precious than diamonds or silver or gold. And before we delve into our topic of today, let us quickly address an issue that came up from our series on the plagiarized Negro way of life. Recall that we mentioned how the Negroes were very swift at birth, as in the Negro women, and that they probably copied the idea of increased pain of birth from the Negro way of life as in because they knew what was coming they needed a way to present it to the Negro women that it was coming from the Most High. So let us quickly clarify our stance by referencing a book called A New Voyage to Guinea describing the customs, manners, soil, climate, habits, building, education, manual arts, agriculture, trade, employment, name it. Likewise, an account of their animals, minerals, and with great variety of entertaining incidents worthy of observation that happened during the author's travel in that large country. And it was written by William Smith, Esquire, and it was published in 1744 note the date of publication 1744 which is barely 100 years after the 1611 kjv please take very good note of the date and you remember it told us that as to women one happiness which those of this part of the world enjoy before those of europe must here be mentioned particularly which is their labors these are times with them so easy so kind so natural and so good that they have no need of midwives doctors nurses etc and i have known women go to bed overnight bring forth a child and be abroad the next day by noon the aforementioned lady assured me that this was owing to the following causes we are not interested in the causes because we had covered them in previous series on the plagiarized negro way of life our interest is to try to explain this idea because it is from this ease of childbirth amongst the negro women that they brought the concept of a forbidden fruit where the most high now said he was going to increase the pains at childbirth which you can see that it is not realistic there is no way the most high created the women to bring forth women easily and suddenly now increase the pain amongst women and not amongst the female animals as well when they all go through the same process so you can see that the slave masters narrative there is deeply flawed so our interest is to show you or clarify what we are saying so that you understand it now remember today a lot of women die through the pains of birth even negro women and we need to clarify that because what happens is when the slave master plans his game he starts walking towards that plan and you would think it's coming from a prophecy or from the most high so we want to add a little clarification to what we were saying so that you don't say oh don't you see how many women are dying today people going through caesarean sessions to have their babies born that is part of the forbidden fruit which we know the slave master concocted from wherever obviously plagiarizing the negro world of life and turning things upside down at least you see it here written by them as at 1644 that the negro women were having ease of birth that they didn't have need for midwives so when you see the problems created by their inorganic foods and drugs today and you see the doctors coming to leverage on the crisis situation don't think they are magicians or they are doing anything for humanity it is man-made problem that they are trying to solve so let us look at it 
before we go into our topic of today so here you see some chicken coiled broiler this is just an example it cuts across inorganic foods including vegetables consumed by negro women during pregnancy so you see that these chicken these are not natural occurrence of chicken but they are genetically modified or produced for food and meat only so they are grown with something called growth hormones it is with those growth hormones that they give to this chicken that make them become ready for food in three months so it is those growth hormones that go into them and make them as big as you can see on your screen and you can see how much they have improved on it from 1950s to date then compare it with in the 17 somethings as well because these are not natural foods the drugs are not natural either one question we want you to ask is how many people in your village are crippled before they started bringing their polio vaccines for children how many people in your village were dumb or imbecilic or autistic before they started bringing things like their uh, folic acid or those drugs and milk for babies these are questions we would expect you to ask before they brought those drugs to immunize pregnant women antenatal this prenatal that how many people in your village were actually deformed these are our questions to you especially if you are very old as in the older generation not a new generation like born few years ago we are talking of somebody who had seen previous generations that's our question to you so again you see on your screen the picture of what would look like a woman and a baby going into labor now when if you look at the bath canal you will see that it is smaller than the womb this is natural so if a pregnant woman feeds on those foods or products produced with growth hormones chances are that the drugs given to those chicken those vegetables and all those inorganic foods including the drugs provided by the slave masters will get to the baby unborn baby and the baby grows bigger than the bath canal and that makes the bath more painful because it's no longer natural because the bath canal remains natural the womb remains natural so to say but the baby has an unnatural growth rate which makes it actually bigger than the bath canal and that of course in increases the pains of childbirth and of course sometimes it grows too big that you need a cesarean session to bring the baby out now in your mind you will be thinking that oh we thank god for the slave master and the europeans for bringing things like uh, cesarean sessions whereas those things would never be there if food were still natural if there was no cheating of nature to produce the foods they consume this is what we wanted to clarify so you see the drugs that they bring folic acid that they need the baby to have vitamin this and vitamin that those are not tested anywhere which we challenge you to show us a research document showing where they conducted a test about babies that were born without their mothers taking folic acid and those that were born with their mothers taking folic acid and which one was doing better because that's the only way to say those things they tell us are true or not so that's what we wanted to clarify for those who were asking some questions about the plagiarized negro way of life so they know already that with these growth hormones antibiotics and whatever they use to produce their inorganic foods it was gonna create this problem and then they have already put it in their book that the most high now said he was going to increase a woman's pains as childbirth they already also know that whatever you want to do to the negro all you need to do is to tell him or her that it is ordained by god as in god meaning the creator of heaven and earth he or she accepts it as his fate without asking you where did you see god and he told you that and that is the magic they have done with their book but let us just uh, now delve into our topic of today believing that we have clarified our position on that which is very easy to see your doctors may not tell you this because they benefit from the problems you notice that when you go to the hospital if you're going to deliver naturally the doctors especially in sub-saharan africa do not feel very good as much as they do when you're going to go through a cs because they make more money off the cs so they will not, may not tell you this but they know as well anyways have you been following our videos did you see the comments about the ashantis and the response from some Ghanaians? 
Did you notice the usual alibi that Ashantis were sold as well as slaves too? Did you notice that they never tell us who captured the Ashantis when they had a standing army? Did you notice how they play the victim card as well? They also argue that the Ashantis are Negroes instead of Negroid. Remember, they try to paint this same picture, the same way the Fulanis do. If you notice, if you say that the Fulanis were the slave hunters, all you will hear from them is no, but Fulanis were also sold. There is a problem only when you ask them to tell you who it was that captured and sold the Fulanis. Then you start seeing them groping like blind people. Because some of them know, some of them don't. Some of them are just intellectually blind. So they try to create a defense for the slave hunters as it were. While others out of sheer man's inhumanity to man want to protect their slave lords. So whatever be the case, we had a comment from an Ashanti who was trying to tell us how the Ashanti created their army and how it wasn't them that were the slave hunters in that area. Remember the slave masters respected all the non-negro groups that were helping them to catch the negroes. So they provided them with the weapons. They came with their guns. It wasn't an easy thing. And it is the same group that helped them today tell us that it is a trade. It was never a trade which you will have seen many objective writers tell us that it was never a trade it was man hunting it was a brutal terror from the slave masters and their foot soldiers so it was never a trade because they didn't pay anybody so that somebody came and captured people around your area and gave you some gifts does not mean he was paying you for the slaves it just meant he gave you some things which has nothing to do with the slaves because some of those they gave the gifts they were to come the next time to capture as well so you can't say they walk with those people and if you notice when they come to where they were going to raid they normally come early in the morning and tell or commandeer the negro king in the neighboring community to take them to the next now the reason they do that is because they don't want them to raise the alarm remember when they pass through anywhere people will raise the alarm so they come to the neighboring one and bring and capture some people to provide them with cover as if these are our people coming it is not the fullers or the ashantis or the barbers or the tuaregs or the arabs as it were so they use them as a kind of cover to invade the other community so the alarm won't be raised if you were to read the materials you will understand these things very well at least you apply common sense to it that's all you need you don't need the teacher the professor be it professor gates or people like dan calloway to start telling you that oh this is this this is that when if you look at people like dan calloway he show you the picture of people with straight hair and still tell you that oh no but these are negroes whereas everybody knows that the negroes had hair like wool this is common knowledge but he will be showing you pictures of indians with straight hair and when he matters most he will come and present you a picture of someone with uh, woolly hair and tell you that both are the same people and they are all indians you see that it is difficult to know who the slave master is sponsoring and who is actually being used to deceive everyone so now we see all their arguments and we try to debunk them shortly let us then try to remember that there is a big difference between negroes and negroids the negroes were the targets of the slave trade and that was because they were peaceful they were intelligent they were hard working and they were not murderers they did not have a standing army so not all africans are negroes not all blacks are negroes at least you know that not all africans can be negroes because there are arabs there are barbers there are toregs hottentots pygmies bushmen name it and only negro pagans were captured and sold during the slave trade remember islam didn't just start coming and people started embracing it no it was with brutal terror now today how they propagate the religion is to make sure that they put you in a state of chaos in a state of difficulty we can give you examples in subsequent editions for example they can make a law that you can't get a job unless you're a muslim so that's a way to force you to change without saying it out they pay them if you go to northern nigeria till tomorrow those who are not muslims are paid differently which will challenge you to investigate too so those are little schemes they use to impose the religion and unfortunately the slave masters food soldiers are used which is mostly these non-negro groups like the ashantis the fulanese the barbers like the Tuaregs, like the canaries those are the same group they are warriors they are warriors too 
they are murderers as well so let's take it one step at a time though then the negroes never had a standing army the negroes the babas the tuaregs had armies and that's the distinguishing factor now ask yourself how can somebody who has an army allow you to capture his own siblings now if you the only reason they keep telling you that it was a slave trade is to make it look like people were voluntarily sold and they accepted it because at that time they made everyone on earth believe that the negroes were beasts akin to cattle the way you can sell cattle today that's the same way they made it look like for the negroes and because they captured women and children who were little didn't know the languages it was difficult to find out how they were captured when they got to the new world and they forced them to give up their languages they made sure that people with the same languages were not put together so their reason for doing that is so that they don't come together to overpower them or fight or mutiny as they put it so our challenge to you is to take note of this that there was never a trade in what was negro land and guinea it was a brutal terror by the slave masters and their foot soldiers so the reason they still are able to get away with telling us it is a slave trade is a slave trade is because the foot soldiers are still there doing the same thing think about it if somebody is not an arab but is helping push an arab religion on top of people he claims are his brothers what do you call such a person that's exactly the same thing they did at that time too but let us just move forward so let us reference the natives of the northern territories of the gold coast their customs religion and folklore by a w cardinal and it was published in 1887 and there we see the following at some time probably towards the middle of the 18th century the ashanti power was at its zenith and in Dr. Claridge's History of the Gold Coast and Ashanti, the King of Ashanti, Osoi Opoku, is named as the conqueror of Dagomba. At Yendi, the record of the defeat is passed over, but the fact remains that there lives today at Yendi and Ashanti a visitor to his uncle there, who before the advent of the Germans acted as a kind of consul and tax gatherer. Now remember, the slave masters would normally use their foot soldiers the same way they used the Fulanese in the side you call Nigeria today as tax collectors. So they take all the goodies of the land, give the Fulanese a little because they remember the slave master to have written that the Negroid group are not very intelligent. They have a reason. They have a case there. So they will give them a little and then weapons. That's all they do. If you check today, the slave master will steal all the resources in Nigeria, give the Negroid group colored paper, which they call dollars, and then give them weapons. That's all they do because these people lack basic common sense, basic intelligence. They lack it. And if you doubt what we're saying, all we challenge you to do is to put it in the comment section and tell us what we have said wrong. So now it goes further down to say the tax I was told amounted to the annual payment of 2,000 slaves. In 1821, the British consul at Kumasi, Mr. J. Dupuis, records in his journal of a residence in Ashanti that the Dagomba capital Yendi and other large towns of the country pay as an annual tribute 500 slaves, 200 cows, 400 sheep and clothes and that smaller towns are tasked in proportion now remember the tax at that time had to be in slaves or anything because it was still trade by butter you have to find out they didn't have a currency then today if you doubt what we're saying is it not colored paper they pay places like nigeria for their oil colored paper whether you call it dollars or euro it is still colored paper whereas in any sensible place they would have been talking of what we need as against what we can provide you but instead they give them colored paper purely colored paper you can call it medium of exchange you can call it what you like but the question you need to ask now is why is the place not developing which is very important let us also reference the gold coast past and present a short description of the country and its people by george mcdonald and it was published in 1898 and there we see the following that part of the guinea territory known in the slave coast extended in early times from the volta river in the gold coast eastward to biafra and included in its area the now well-known countries of togo dahomey lagos yoruba and benin and formed together with ashanti one of the three great slave producing parts of the african continent 
in these early times, Ashanti, Dahomey, Yoruba, and Benin were among the most powerful states to be found in this part of Africa, ruled by savage despots and maintaining what might be termed large standing armies. That's our interest. Well armed and disciplined in their own native fashion and used for raids and forays upon their weaker neighbors. They supplied the European adventurers who visited the coast for this purpose with their cargoes of black ivory in exchange for those commodities most tempting to these willy savages. So again, you see what we're talking about. You see that it gave us all the people that were actually Negroid there. So when we said the Yorubas were Negroid, some people would have doubted it, but at least the slave master wrote it as well. So you see where it gave us the lists of those that had a standing army. No Negro nation had a standing army. None of them. Because they felt that there was no need for it. These were people that were forbidden from killing. That's that your so-called Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, were the things they lived by. So they didn't see the need to have a standing army. What will an army be doing for you? And you can also see how they used their foot soldiers today. You notice that the Ashanti are lumped together in what you call Ghana, which used to be the Gold Coast. Ashanti was really not part of the Gold Coast, which we are going to show you shortly. You might doubt us as well, but you go and read the materials yourself. Now you see again that the Yorubas are distributed between Dahomey and Nigeria which is how they wanted to put them along with the Fulanese in the Nigerian side because they know where the fools live in West Africa. They need their foot soldiers in every geographical space because that's the only way to continue enslaving the Negroes. So you see, while there are Yorubas in Togo and Bene, which were where Dahomey was, there are some in Nigeria as well. So they use them to maintain their subjugation of the Negroes in those areas. Likewise in Nigeria too. So that's the same thing they are doing. So you notice that they have the Ashanti doing their stuff in in what you call the Gold Coast. And remember for the ancient Beni Kingdom, the king at some point turned down the idea of slave trade for which he was deported, which we challenge you to investigate. So the Benis are no longer trusted in that project. That is why they now have the Ashantis, the Fulanese, the Babas, the Tuaregs, the Yorubas as favored foot soldiers today which will challenge you to investigate from history and contemporary events as well. So we read the concluding part of that highlighted portion and it says without exception each of these once most powerful nations has fallen in its turn before the march of European progress which has slowly but steadily pushed its way throughout the whole west coast the last to go were ashanti and benin the latter of which will be long remembered for the brutal murder of acting consul which is not our interest so you notice that the last they conquered were ashanti and benin you see the ancient benin kingdom is still there today and you see have ashanti in ghana as well maybe if you dug deeper you will understand what they are doing today and now remember the country called benin is just Dahomey, they renamed it because it is a French possession. The French own it as it stands today, while the British own Nigeria and Ghana. So, just as you are dancing around and defending and supporting one Nigeria or Ghana or the so called invitation to African Americans to come and settle in Ghana, remember you are defending and supporting the slave masters. You notice when their prince came recently. Why not go and check the history of all the monarchs he visited? That will give you the footprint, the footmark, the path of the slave trade, the evil axis. That's how you will find it. It's very easy if you just do basic research of a primary school student. Let us also reference Stamford's Compendium of Geography and Travel, New Issue Africa Volume 1, North Africa by A. H. King, and it was published in 1895. And there we see the following. So here is a map of the area. All we challenge you to do here is to look at the difference in names. Because remember, the slave master came from somewhere. He didn't know the languages. And this is for those who go to where they say they have slave voyages manifest. To read where the names end in year and other crap. Because that's their new game. So this is to show you how they remodeled the slave trade. And which we ultimately will show you 
along the line somewhere in a new series but then we want you to look at the different names of the cities you will also see that nigeria is clearly delineated here in an 1895 book but if you asked a phd holder in nigeria today he will tell you that oh no nigeria was created in 1914 they have always been there what the slave master does is at each point he remodels his slave trade business renames certain places because they believe that the negro doesn't take back and forth and unfortunately the negroid group their foot soldiers are not very intelligent imagine a people that will kill their brothers in to satisfy a foreigner and you are telling us that those people have common sense think about it anyone you see carrying weapons made by the slave masters and shooting his so-called siblings over the interest of the slave master who do you think is a fool there that should be your question remember these countries are slave masters interest they want them together so that they can use the less intelligent negroid group against the negroes so that's exactly what they are doing so the weapons are provided to them because they are not intelligent because whatever thing you think about even if anyone starts shouting biafra or ambazonia today for any intelligent group it will be about brother come what is the problem what do we do what do we make changes to so that everyone can be happy that's how brotherhood is but for you to take a gun given to you by another man perhaps younger than you in fact a baby to shoot your brother and turn around to say oh no he's my brother but uh, god has made us one that should tell you who the god they are calling is that's the same way they did the slave trade remember they lack wisdom they lack intelligence from what they are doing today you should be able to know how can somebody who claims to be your brother be killing you in in defense of a foreigner that has not no relation no regard for him even that should tell you that should be the simple thing to ask yourself it doesn't matter how you look at it it doesn't matter what you believe our question to you is why do you think your brother should kill you in defense of a slave master's interest if it is islam islam is an arab religion if it is for christianity is an european religion so why should your brother kill you in defense of religions that are totally alien to you and has not helped even your brother because at least before you embrace someone else's religion you should be able to look at him and say oh yeah this is something good to behold i like the way he is he has nothing to offer but he wants you to embrace his yoke that's the challenge in that region but again back to the ashantis we see where they are on the map we see the yorubas we see all those other places on this map but let's just move forward and from within the highlighted portion we see where it tries to tell us who were the pagan negroes and different groups those are where they were capturing the slaves from remember at this time that they were writing they had started lumping the negroes with the negroid group together to give you what you have today of things like one nigeria one cameroon one ghana an ancient kingdom of ghana that has nothing to do with the ghana of today so you understand what was saying but then you see where it says a gala which is a gala left bank lower benue to niger confluence and thence nearly to the delta and to the oyono river pagan negroes the fact that they are pagan negroes makes them pray for the slave hunters which were muslims because if you don't become muslims they will capture you so now it goes further you see where it says Ibo, head of niger delta thence east to cross river and west to yoruba are the dominant people of the delta hence all slaves formerly shipped from this region were called Ibo, pagan negroes so you see they are layered as pagan negroes your key thing to take away here is pagan negroes then let's look at what it says about the ashanti but before we do that we see where it tells us about the kanuri it says dominant in Bornu, also numerous in kanem all muslim negro hamitic type so that's those that are mixed between hamitic and negroid groups they produce the negro hamitic type negro features very marked speech negro largely affected by tibial elements so you see that they show you that it's a cross now these guys studied everything to a t now ask yourself if an ashanti is claiming that oh no they were also captured and sold who captured them when they had a standing army likewise the yoruba we had shown you where the yorubas were reading the bars the bars are not yorubas they became yorubas by conquest so you understand what we're saying so we go further down 
to see what it says about the same Ashanti. And from just above the highlighted portion, we had no need to copy the entire thing, but you see where it says that the whole population had been reduced by debt, arbitrary legal sentences and other causes to a state of absolute slavery and were consequently at any moment liable to be seized by the king's thieves for the human sacrifices, which were at one time almost more numerous and accompanied by more revolting cannibalistic orgies than in Ashanti. So you see, it tells you that these ones were even trying to surpass the Ashanti in their cannibalistic orgies. Now, it is not like the Ashantis were cannibals, as the slave master is claiming, because the slave master uses them to capture their victims, the slave trade. So, but it goes further. Let's show you why you don't have to listen to these Negroid groups because they believe every crap the slave master says without analyzing it. Now it shows us further down, we got to digress. Like we told you, we are not orthodox here. So you see where it tells us that as many as 4,000 widers were immolated at the conquest of that state in 1727. Now we need to find out who did the conquest. But further down it says about the same time Captain Snellgrave witnessed the butchery of 400 members of the Tofu tribe whose bodies were during the night all eaten by the Dahomans. Governor Hogg of Fourth Apollonia was present at the grand custom held in honor of King Adanzu II in 1791 when 500 victims were sacrificed and M. Latig was witness of the hideous orgies accompanying the great massacre for King Gezo in 1860. So, but our interest is where it says that 400 members of the Tufu tribe whose bodies were, during the night, all eaten by the Dahomans. So, an average Negroid group will believe this story, that 400 people were eaten in a night. You understand? But now think about it. If they were even cannibals as being claimed, it would have been they share, distribute, share the meat and take it home. It's not like they could have eaten it in one night. And now ask yourself again, the reason they make these numbers very big is so that people would think that these people are just killing themselves. So we are helping them by capturing and making slaves of them. So you understand this thing very well. The slave master is a liar, but the foot soldiers are more dangerous because they are very unintelligent. So they buy into the slave master's lies without even thinking. They don't think at all. Remember also that they mentioned about the relationship between the Ashantis and the Fantis. But there are numerous words they don't say anything about. Let us reference New Grisham Encyclopedia, Volume 4, Part 3, published 1922. And there we see the following. It tells us that the Fantis are a people of West Africa inhabiting the coast district of the Gold Coast Colony between the Ashantis and the sea. They were at one time the most numerous and powerful people situated immediately on the Gold Coast seaboard, but their power was almost entirely broken after 1811 by repeated invasions of the Ashantis and they have since lived under British protection. The soil is fertile, producing fruits, maize and palm wine. Now, remember we told you that the Negroes did not have a standing army. And remember, we had also cited a material where they told us how the Negroes got to the coast. They were pushed away from somewhere. We're not sure where. We've not researched that. And they told us also that they were provided with weapons at some point to protect them from the Moors. If you remember that, it's in one of the videos. So that should explain to you who, who the Fantis are because the Ashantis were not originally part of the Gold Coast. Just the same way the Yorubas and the Fulanese were not originally part of Nigeria, which we shall ultimately show you. You will see it written by the slave masters as well. So now, it's either the Fantis are not real Negroes, but Negroid, or they are Negroes provided with the weapons to defend themselves against the Ashantis. But the Ashantis, being more brutal, disarmed them not too long after. Remember, by 1811, the slave trade was almost winding down because by 1808, the British, who were the major slave hunters at that time, they were the biggest slave hunters, had already banned slave trade in their territories. So that's why it was already going down. But of course, the foot soldiers in sub-Saharan Africa, they do not have the 
relevant common sense to know when to stop so they probably were still invading and raiding the fountains whatever be the case our interest is to show you the relationship between the two before now so you understand that the ashantis were the same people used by the slave masters to capture the negroes let us reference the forest officers handbook of the gold coast ashanti and the northern territories by tf chip and it was published in 1922 now notice that it says the gold coast ashanti and the northern territories that should tell you that these are all different now remember it is the gold coast that they renamed ghana and it is now within that geographical space that they lumped them up with ashanti because they know where the fools live in that region so you need to understand this very well we also challenge you to conduct your own research just rise above what you already know rise above cognitive dissonance and try to look at things objectively you will understand what, what we're saying and you will understand what the books are saying too now you will notice that those negroid groups and the descendants of the slave hunters will jump on the bandwagon and start telling us how oh no they are and of course you know that the so-called um, hebrew israelites and the so-called african americans think that every black skinned person is actually negro which is not true which are, they have not taken time to study which in subsequent editions we shall show you where they wrote it themselves some places you see them write something like it was the hebrews and the negroes that were laboring together in the heat of egypt under the taskmaster and all that you will see where they are lying anyway if you study the things yourself so we see what it tells us here from the map that northern territories were different from the ashanti which is also different from the gold coast colony which you can see but it was the same gold coast colony the same way they demarcated it that they renamed ghana today which has nothing to do with the ancient kingdom of ghana which they destroyed with slave raids and slave razias as they will call it in islamic times so you understand what is going on so when you are looking at ghana today you think it has something to do with the africans or the negroes it doesn't have but let us just look at one or two other materials before we round up so let us reference a history of the gold coast and ashanti from the earliest times to the commencement of the 20th century by w wanton claridge with an introduction by sir Howell clifford that was a colonial officer if you remember him governor and commander in chief of the gold coast so now remember he is governor and commander in chief that's the the slave masters themselves and it is in two volumes with maps this is volume one published 1915 and there we see the following and from the highlighted portion it says although tradition asserts and other evidence favors the belief that these people and the fantis and other three speaking races are the offsprings of a common stock yet the ashantis stand out in marked contrast to all the others distinguished as much by their skill and bravery in war as by the patriotism and power of combination that ultimately led to the formation of the most powerful and in fact the only really important kingdom and empire that the gold coast has ever seen from small beginnings these people gradually extended their power and authority both by diplomacy and by force of arms until in the end all the surrounding tribes owed allegiance to them and their countries became tributaries provinces of ashanti nor can there be the least doubt that the kingdom would before the close of the 19th century have included the whole gold coast had not the scarboard tribes been assisted and protected by the europeans who feared their settlement and trade might be endangered now we ask you if ashanti were negroes like the other people were why would they be conquering themselves if you check your records and your history well outside the mainstream narrative you will discover that negroes are not conquering people if you don't have an army how will you be attacking people all the stories about oh africans made wars to capture slaves slaves are lies which we challenge you to it doesn't matter if you hold a phd from harvard or oxford we challenge you to it so there is no way you can make wars to capture slaves without an army and these people that had an army were easy fools in the hands of the slave masters to be used the only reason they tell you that oh no it's the africans that sold themselves is because they are protecting their foot soldiers but let us move forward 
So here we see something like the cowardice of the Fanti has at times been exaggerated and he has been blamed for it more than he really deserves. His inefficiency as a warrior is due to faults in the system rather than in the individual. Taking man for man, the Fanti is probably nearly as good as the Ashanti. The Ashantis, however, have built up a splendid military organization to the perfection of which everything else has been sacrificed and they have learned to rely on themselves and to put the national interest before their own. The Fantis, on the other hand, have suffered from their long contact with Europeans. Their surroundings and their mode of life have to some extent become artificial and they have been taught to rely upon the protection of a stronger race rather than upon their own efforts. Though they have a military system similar to that of Ashanti, it has never been brought to such perfection nor made to take precedence to other things but has rather been allowed to atrophy from disuse. Now, remember, if something is not part of you, is not part of you. The Negro groups are warriors. They are warlike. They love weapons. They love, they love violence. So the slave master just leveraged on that, gave them the weapons, and even when they tried to give the Negroes, the Negroes didn't accept. The same way the Negroes didn't accept their religion, their religions were imposed, both the Islam and Christianity. So you can't say somebody who was forced by economic circumstances and war to become a Muslim, a Christian, is actually one. That their children embraced the religion was because their forefathers were practicing it when the children were born. It's not like that's the Negro way of life. The Negroes were not Christians, Muslims, or Jews. They had a way of life, a way of laws and obedience to the Most High, rather than this idea of um, how somebody murdered somewhere is your savior and all that. They don't have that. But let us just move forward and round up. So for the so-called African Americans who are planning to make it back to Ghana because they were deceived to believe they could have been from there, let us reference a history of the Gold Coast of West Africa by A.B. Ellis and it was published in 1893 and there we see the following. Now on your left you will see at least a map of the area and what it looked like. The onus is now on you to look at the map today and see the difference between what it was then and what it is today. And remember that the slave trade is still very much alive and well till tomorrow morning. And from within the highlighted portion it says, The adventurers returned to Portugal with 216 slaves, 46 of whom were assigned as the infant's fifth, of which says the Portuguese chronicler, he had great joy because of their salvation who otherwise had been destined to perdition. These poor creatures were sold in open market, the father being perhaps carried to Lagos, the mother to Lisbon and the children elsewhere. It is certain that the Portuguese engaged in a trade even more nefarious. They kidnapped Negroes on the coast of Benin and carried them to Almina where they sold their prey to other Negroes for gold. The infamous system on which the development of America in many places depended is thus clearly proved to have been in perfect existence long antecedent to the discovery of the new world to which it found its way from the old. Now you notice that they go and kidnap the Negroes from elsewhere and then go to Elmina. Remember you couldn't have captured from one the Places around Elmina Castle were at that time protected by the British, the Europeans and Americans, so to say. So there is no way you could have captured those that were under the protection of those that were buying the slaves. So your only choice at that time would be to go to places that were unprotected. And that's what they did. So they will come to all the other places, capture the slaves and ship them to Elmina. It is from Elmina that they are seasoned either in Zanzibar before they are now shipped to the new world. This is very simple. So stop thinking you are from the Ghana of today and think better of where you could be from. So let us round up with one or more little material. So let us reference the modern part of an universal history from the earliest accounts to the present time compiled from original authors volume 38 and it was published in 1884 and there we see the following 
that the Negroes believe in the true God, the creator of the world. Ideas the Negroes entertain of the supreme being. The Negroes consult the fetish in all cases of importance. So now, if the Ashanti we are not exactly worshipping the same thing as the Negroes, what sense does it make to say they were also Negroes? Remember, it is only those they classified as pagans. That's by the Muslims, Christians and Jews that were being captured and the Negroes. And above all, the Ashanti had a standing army, just like the Yorubas, the Fulanese and other non-Negroes. It was only the, ne the same Negroes that did not have a standing army. So how then do you balance it? Now if you claim that your alibi that the Ashantis were not the slave hunters like the Fulanese and the Arabs at that time, being that they were also sold, you need to tell us who was powerful enough to come and capture an Ashanti when they had a standing army, when they couldn't even capture all the others that had standing armies. Now if you tell us that the same Ashanti were capturing and selling themselves, then you are telling us that we are stupid. And above all, the slave master was not buying everybody. Their target was only the pagan Negroes. And the reason was simple. The Negro way of life at that time made him abhor bloodshed. In fact, all the things you see you call your Ten Commandments were the way of life of the Negroes. So the slave master wanted those that will be like that. Because if you were to capture, let's say, a warrior, by nature, the Hamitic groups were warlike they will certainly kill you. That's the truth of it. But in subsequent editions, we shall show you where these things are written in black and white and very clear enough. And here we come to the end of this edition of the Ashanti and the Slave Trade, a reply part one. We thank you very much for listening and we do hope you will find time to conduct your own research. Peace.